Hurricane Aaron shocked forecasters yesterday, exploding into a Category 5 hurricane that outperformed nearly every forecast model. It has weakened down, but will re-intensify, staying a very powerful hurricane for the next several days. And the Bahamas, parts of the East Coast, and even Bermuda need to be on alert for potential impacts, including potential for strong winds, high surf, and rip currents. Plus, there's another tropical system in the works later this week that the Caribbean should be watching closely. I'm about to show you the latest update on the tropics, but first, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here for more tropical weather updates. So here's a live look at the current satellite imagery of Hurricane Aaron. It's still a major hurricane. Um, yesterday, it rapidly intensified all the way up to a Category 5 hurricane with winds of 160 miles an hour. And it was a, a very compact system, but now it's actually expanding. We're seeing it actually finishing an eyewall replacement cycle, which will make the system much bigger with a much bigger eye, but also it's going to be able to start re-intensifying. Again, the impacts will be extending out further from the center as we go forward. So here's a, a look at the current update, Advisory 26A. Maximum sustained winds are at 125 miles an hour, making a high-end Category 3 hurricane. Minimum central pressure is down to 946 millibars, and it's moving west-northwest at 13 miles an hour, so it's still having that west-northwest motion. It's expected to turn over the next day or so, turn more northwest and then more to the north. Um, and then, look at this, we have another disturbance in the tropical Atlantic, a 40% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days. A tropical wave located near the Cabo Verde Islands is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Some gradual development of this system is possible during the later half of the week. And a, a tropical depression could form late this week or next weekend while the system moves westward to west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour, approaching the northeastern Caribbean Sea or the southwestern Atlantic. So this one is actually a bit further south than where Aaron was. So this is headed straight towards the Leeward Islands and the northeastern Caribbean. Here's a look at the cone for Hurricane Aaron. Tropical storm warnings are in place, actually, for the Turks and Caicos Islands, as tropical storm force winds are expected to go past those islands. And as this storm kind of moves to the east and the northeast of the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas, tomorrow afternoon, Monday afternoon, going into Tuesday, we're looking at a potential re-intensification as well with this storm as a, as a much bigger storm system, but we're still expecting it to re-intensify into a Category 4 uh, with winds of potentially 145 miles an hour or so on Monday into Tuesday. And actually, the previous forecasts were showing peak intensity happening on Monday night, but of course, it intensified way faster than a lot of the forecast models were showing. But this is expected to, to, to move to the east of the Bahamas. It's not going to make a direct hit on the Bahamas. Um, and then... Going into Wednesday and Thursday, it's expected to pass about halfway between North Carolina and Bermuda. Now, there's still some track uncertainty because this storm actually has been going a bit further west than expected, but also the wind field will be expanding. So um, there are going to be impacts to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, the coast of North Carolina, and potentially the Northeast. That will be possible with some, some gusty winds. Bermuda also should be watching. Uh, for potential impacts. it It's looking less likely for Bermuda now and more likely for North Carolina based on the latest track guidance. That's what we're expecting. Um, here's a look at the model trends, and you can see that this map is kind of showing that Hurricane Aaron has consistently been to the south and to the west of all of the track guidance, and the model guidance has shifted west. It's been shifting west all along. Before it was showing it hitting Bermuda. Now it's like halfway between North Carolina and Bermuda. And this hurricane has been following the furthest west part of the track guidance all along. And so even though it's showing about halfway between North Carolina and Bermuda, I'm I'm thinking it could go just a little bit closer. We're not expecting any any direct landfall in the US or anything like that. No landfall for, for the Bahamas either. But it it does have a significant possibility to get a bit closer than the forecast models are expecting. Um, and here's the key messages for Hurricane Aaron. We're looking at bands of heavy rainfall continuing across portions of Puerto Rico and 
the Virgin Islands through tonight, but Hurricane Aaron is moving away, so that heavy rain is expected to diminish, but there is the potential for considerable flooding still possible across these areas, and tropical storm conditions are expected in the Turks and Caicos Islands and the southeastern Bahamas tonight and Monday, and then there's also life-threatening surf and rip currents along the beaches of the Bahamas, a lot of the east coast of the U.S., Bermuda, and even Atlantic Canada over the next several days, so especially with that wind field, I keep bringing that up, that the wind field is going to be expanding, and we're going to look at some of those hurricane models showing how this storm is going to grow massively. And so those impacts are going to extend out a lot further than they are right now, away from the center. Um, also, interest along the outer banks of North Carolina and Bermuda should be monitoring Aaron as there is a risk of strong winds from the outer rain bands of the storm during the middle part of the week. Here's a look at the tropical storm force wind probabilities and the arrival time of tropical storm force winds. We're looking at tropical storm force winds arriving in the Turks and Caicos and parts of the Bahamas tonight going into early on Monday that's looking quite likely especially for the Turks and Caicos Islands and then even a at least a 20 to 30 percent chance for the eastern Bahamas so they could extend potentially tropical storm watches if not warnings into those areas as well depending on how close Hurricane Aaron is able to get then um, by the time we get to around Wednesday morning Wednesday afternoon it's going to be bringing those tropical storm force winds into the outer banks of North Carolina, perhaps, and also Bermuda, potentially. But based on the track history of Hurricane Aaron and a lot of the, the forecast modeling, I'm thinking that North Carolina, the, the coast of North Carolina, is more likely to see tropical storm force winds than even Bermuda is. Here's a look at the HAFS A model. Part of the reason it's gone a bit further west than expected is somewhat to do with the structure of the storm, but also uh, the high pressure ridging has actually been a bit stronger than expected. So the, the Euro AI model has actually been getting it right. For the past several days with that stronger high pressure ridge, in the Atlantic, we could have some some of those tropical storm force winds getting close to the Turks and Caicos and the eastern Bahamas, but this is a, still a very powerful hurricane, uh, a Category 3 or Category 4 major hurricane going into Tuesday and Wednesday, and then at, by the time we get into, into uh, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, we're seeing those tropical storm force winds moving towards the outer banks of North Carolina. And Bermuda is over here. So, yeah, not seeing so much of those tropical storm force winds. It's a lot closer to North Carolina with that. We're not, we're not expecting a landfall again or any, anything too terrible, but those tropical storm force winds are, are definitely going to be something to watch out for. So you are going to get some impacts from this hurricane, just not, not a direct hit or anything at this point is looking unlikely, but but still a high-end Category 2 hurricane moving just east of North Carolina with some of those tropical storm force winds. And then at least tropical storm force wind gusts will be able to hit the Boston area, uh, kind of the coast of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, even Nova Scotia, looking at some of those tropical storm force winds potentially also notice this storm really expands from right here it's a very compact storm and then it, it really blows up in in size over the next several days uh but at this point by the end of the week going to friday this is going to be more of a post-tropical cyclone as it heads towards atlantic canada that's kind of what typically happens now here's the intensity forecast um over the next 36 to 48 hours or so, there is the potential that this intensifies back to a Category 4. By the time you're watching this video, this might actually be back to Category 4 intensity. Uh, and then it's expected to, to go back down and slowly start weakening. There's going to be some uh, potential shear. There's still very warm sea surface temperatures for the next several days. But at some point, there could be more eyewall replacement cycles and some of that wind shear affecting the storm system too. But we're still expecting Category 3 going all the way into the next four days or so before it drops below Category 3 major hurricane intensity. So the maximum winds are decreasing, but they are spread out over a much larger area. Now, here's a look at the, uh, the potential for high waves because uh, 
there's going to be the wind impacts, but also high waves are going to be an issue. So here's the wave forecast from the Euro model. This is what's kind of going on tonight. We have waves of up to around 15 feet, even 15 to 20 feet across the Turks and Caicos Islands. Of course, in the center of the storm, the waves are going to be over 40 to 50 feet. But those high waves do move along the east coast of the Bahamas as the wind field expands as well. We're looking at those same 15 to 20 foot waves going along the east coast of the Bahamas. We notice those waves are, are starting to move up towards the east coast of the U.S. So even um, the east coast of Florida is not looking at some extreme waves, but still around 10 feet potentially. Uh, Georgia a bit less, sort of further away from the storm, but the east coast of North Carolina already going into Tuesday night looking at waves approaching 10 feet. But then a majority of that wave action comes in going into Wednesday night and Thursday with waves over 20 feet off the outer banks of North Carolina, looking at 22-foot waves right there. And then, of course, in the center of Hurricane Aaron, we're looking at 50-foot waves. And that that moves up along the East Coast, and that's why it's going to be very important to watch what's happening there, looking at those uh, waves of over 15 feet along the east coast and then that starts moving further towards atlantic canada now here's the gfs model showing basically this big turn is expected kind of you know a, a big turn to the to the northwest and the north is expected over the next couple days monday and tuesday specifically and then going into wednesday this this makes that close approach to um to the carolinas let's see the the latest run here, we're seeing a more intense hurricane slightly and possibly a little bit further, yeah, a little bit further west, closer to North Carolina, like I was saying. And uh, that's going into Wednesday and Thursday. It makes that close approach to North Carolina and, and Bermuda, and then it heads off towards Atlantic Canada. But there's that other tropical system that could be forming later this week that the NHC is watching. We have this. Um, the GFS is showing a tropical depression possibly forming around Thursday night going into Friday. And this is going into the Caribbean, according to the GFS. Now, it actually goes over the islands, which is going to keep it from intensifying very quickly. But uh, it's also going to cause a lot of impacts in terms of, of heavy rain and potential flooding. And then notice uh, the GFS takes it along the east coast of Florida while quickly intensifying it as a big hurricane. That's going into early next week. Um, the previous run was having it a lot further west towards Mississippi, I believe. Um, but yeah, there's going to be another storm system behind Aaron. And that's the GFS model's take on it. Uh, but yeah, if it goes into the Caribbean or or the Gulf, which there's a lot of uncertainty on where it's going to go. It could turn out to see and become more of a fish storm, or it could go a little bit further west and possibly into the Gulf, or it could kind of go up the the southeast coast of the U.S. Um, but if it does go towards the Caribbean and the Gulf, that's going to be a very serious situation. As you can see, some very high upper ocean heat content, well over 100, even approaching 200 in some parts of the Caribbean. So there's a lot of heat potential for this storm to to quickly strengthen if it's able to get into a favorable environment with not a lot of dry air and also low wind shear. So this is definitely something to watch, this, this other disturbance, because we are in the main part of hurricane season. So, so we'll be watching pretty much all of these disturbances that, that start moving towards the Caribbean. Here's the GEFS ensembles. Um, this is showing Hurricane Aaron and also this this new tropical system uh, potentially forming later this week. But uh, notice the the slower ensembles are showing Aaron moving towards the the North Carolina coast. The faster ones are taking it further east. So um, the more likely scenario is that it kind of goes somewhere in the middle of that. But it is it is sliding a little bit further west towards North Carolina again. But then notice this. These are the GEFS ensembles kind of showing this new disturbance starts moving towards the northeastern Caribbean, and it could turn towards the east coast. There's a, a wide variety of where this could go. This could go further east, out to sea, 
potentially along the east coast hitting the southeast, or it could go into the gulf, which is not something you want to see. And the latest run of the GEFS ensembles are taking it more towards the southeastern U.S. in the latest run. Um, but the Euro ensembles are showing something completely different. Some members showing it going towards the Bahamas and Florida and potentially the southeastern U.S., but a lot of, a lot of them are showing it turning out to see it becoming a fish storm. So there's, there's a wide uh, possibility on, on where this could go. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens over the next several days to see how, uh, how, how things change going forward with that. But yeah, that's pretty much what's happening in the tropics. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button, share the video, comment below, and subscribe and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.